Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ozark Outpost in Dixon, Missouri. This is the United States in KMT, January 1943. The Americans still have their six tech chips. They're gonna try to move jet fighters, strategic rockets, wartime economy, improved factories, heavy carriers, and attack transports. Okay. Jet fighters is an eight. Missed with a three. Strategic rockets is a nine. Missed with a six. Wartime economy is a seven. And they got that with an 11, so that goes to stage two. Improved factories is a seven. Got that with a 10, so they've finished that. Heavy carriers is an eight. Got that with an 11. So it goes to stage three. And attack transports is an eight. Missed that with a six. Well, they could have done worse. Okay, now since we're here, and since it is by the rules uh, part of the production phase, we're going to go on and do the uh, peacetime income roll. Got a five. The United States is sitting on 60. So that pushes them up to 63, which is their wartime economy. Okay, so now now we're going to hold off for just a minute on an important decision. Because we want to make another roll here and see what happens first. Um, the United States is going to spend... Oh, I'm going to look here again. Suddenly I have forgotten. The United States is going to spend three for a roll... To try to, oh no, wait, we gotta do the other one first. Okay, the United States is declaring war on Germany. Now that they are at war with a major power, they're gonna spend three on a roll to uh, try to align Brazil. And they will miss that with a 12. Well, it was worth a chance. They were trying to align the Brazilian units already down there to fight the Germans so uh, <coughs> they wouldn't have to transport as many guys down. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do their build. They started with 59 minus the three they spent on that leaves 56. I'll let you know. Okay, I made an error. I wasn't thinking when the United States declared war on Germany, they automatically aligned Brazil because Brazil is at war with Germany. So they didn't need to spend three to attempt that alignment role. So we're going to let them recall that and they're going to spend that three to try to align Venezuela instead. You know, they missed it anyway with a nine. Okay. The American build. 
All right. After spending the three on the alignment roll, they had 56 left. They have spent four to finish this fleet carrier. They're lend leasing three to free France again. 11 on a tactical bomber. 20 on two fighters. 10 on two elite marines. And eight on two other marines. All that adds up to 56. And Chen Kai Shek is uh, well, he's got to do something. He's got three, so he's going to spend that on another infantry. I'll move that over whenever the time comes. Okay, now combat moves. Well, they don't need to rely on the Monroe Doctrine anymore. You got these two German submarines down here. So this carrier is going to combat move down here. The destroyer is going with them and we better go ahead and send the two heavy cruisers as well just in case. So the uh, two carrier borne aircraft are on uh, combat air patrol and the destroyer is going to pair with one of them to attack the German submarines. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to do this real quick. The destroyer attacks on a four. He missed with a ten. The fighter is a six. He hit with a two. That will be on the coastal sub. The tactical bomber is a seven. He missed with a nine. And the U-boat's gonna submerge and save himself. Since the coastal sub got hit anyway, he's shooting back. He missed with a five. Okay. That takes care of that. I have debated on whether or not to do this. And I have decided to find the best camera angle here. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. These two heavy bombers sitting there in New England. The United States has long range aircraft. And there's an airfield there, so the heavy bombers actually have a movement of nine. Plus two for long-range aircraft onto their normal six. Plus one for the airfield. So they're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And uh, carpet bomb these Germans at Normandy. And then six... Oh, Six seven to land at the uh, British Midlands if they survive. And then another combat move 
Let's see. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, he they can go along with them. These three transports here off of New York are loading these five infantry, plus there's another infantry. Scratch that. Those five infantry and a light tank that is sitting at New York. And then they're going to go one, two, three to come over here and invade Normandy. And then this destroyer down here off Washington, one, two, three, four, in escort. The light cruiser is going to come along as well. This light cruiser is off of escort duty. He's going one, two, three to come up here and join them. And that's all that can reach there. So that's going to be it for our combat here. Uh, the American forces in Latin America or down there in Brazil uh, are not going to do any combat. Okay. So, we're going to do tilt down now. We're going to do the uh, carpet bombing first. And Germany is going to send it's two jet fighters. They're going to scramble them from the airfield in Paris to, uh, now wait a minute. Can you intercept car? No, you can't intercept carpet bombing. Hang on a second. Let me check the rules. A carpet bombing mission can be intercepted. So the Germans are sending these two jet fighters from Paris over there to do the interception. And since they have a commander there, they will add plus, plus one to their interception uh, value. I believe that'll make them intercepting on a six. Yes, it will. I'll let you know. Well, I was afraid that might happen. The heavy bombers both got shot down in the interception round before they could drop their bombs. But uh, they did shoot one of the jet fighters down in return. So, no carpet bombing. All right, now we'll do the uh, amphibious landing at Normandy. Uh, the two light cruisers are each gonna have a uh, shore bombardment and then uh, the infantry will go ashore. Okay, the United States liberated Normandy at a cost of three infantry. So that's, uh, that'd be Free France up one. Let's see. Yeah, I suppose that would rightly go to Free France. Since it's originally French territory. So yeah, Free France up one. Germany down one. And... That is... Make sure. Yep, 
Yeah, that's it for American combat. Uh, now we're going to do non-combat moves. Get over here. Okay, this fighter from New England has long-range aircraft plus an airfield, so it can travel six. So it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, to land here in the British Midlands. Then mm, yeah, this coastal sub just because he needs to do something to get out of the way is gonna go one, two up there. I think postal sub just moved one. Let me check real quick. Yeah, they just had a move of one, and he had the the uh, major shipyard to give him the bonus. This coastal sub down here. Uh, does not have a major shipyard so he's just going to go one out to there these two transports are picking up uh, two elite marines and uh Two regular Marines, and they're moving them one space up to New York. Uh, there is an extra infantry there at uh, Washington, D.C., that is uh, strategic rail up to New York. So he'll stay, no, actually he won't stay on that card. He'll come off that card and just park himself at New York with that other infantry. The commander, strategic, no, the commander got on one of the transports and went to New York with them because he doesn't take up any space on a transport. Now, let's see here. <laughs> These two battleships down here have a uh, major facility bonus. So they're going to go one, two, three through the Panama Canal and into the Pacific. This medium bomber isn't doing anything here right now. With long-range aircraft, he can move six spaces. So what can we do with him? One, two, three, four, five... Six, we could land him at Gibraltar, which I think is what we're going to do. So he flies over there. Yeah, I think that's it 
for the East Coast. Mm, yes, that's it for the East Coast. Non-combat movement over here on the West Coast. The United States is declaring war on Japan as well. What? What's that? What? What? What did you say, Winston? Are you sure? Okay, if that's the way you want it. Uh, Prime Minister Churchill has just announced that the Commonwealth is also declaring war on Japan at this time. Wait a minute. No. Hang on. I don't think they can do that. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Declarations of war. Declared war on another nation during the war. Well, yes, they can do that because... Japan, Japan declared war on China, and China counts as a nation. So yes, that is legal for them to declare war on Japan. Uh, the reason they have both decided to do this is, uh, I believe if I read the rules correctly, this now negates the uh, Japanese surprise attack because uh, the way the rules pretty much run, somebody declares war on you, uh, you, you don't, you're just, you're at war. It's not like you have to make your own declaration. This is the way I read the rules. So, uh, if I have that wrong, somebody pointed out in the comments, but I, like I said, I believe both of them doing that together is going to negate the uh, Japanese surprise attack. So, since that is the case, the American fleet no longer needs to stay scattered. They can... Uh, group up if they wish, which I believe they're going to. Are they going to? Yeah, I think they will. So this is what's going to happen. Well, they might group up a bit. This battleship is moving one space here to the Hawaiian Islands. This transport is going one, two spaces back to uh, the West Coast. This heavy cruiser is going one, two spaces over here to join this battleship. This destroyer is going to go one space over there to join them. Um, this coastal sub is going to go one, two spaces out to there. This coastal sub doesn't have any majors there, I don't believe. No, no major facilities there. So he's just going to go one space to here. These two battleships are going to go one, two spaces down to here. Yeah. 
this destroyer is going one, two, three down to there. This carrier is going to go one space down to there. The heavy cruiser and this other destroyer are going with them. And That's that for the time being. Uh, KMT doesn't have any non-combat movement. So, we are placing units. I have to scoot some guys over here to make room. Actually, yeah, I may want to split them destroyers up, so I'll just keep him there. So this carrier with a tactical bomber and a fighter. is going right there to the major shipyard. Two elite marines are going to the major factory in San Francisco. sure I do this right. That'll be it for over there. The other two Marines are going to come over here and go to the major factory in New York. So there's two Marines there. The fighter is going to the medium factory there at New England. And the three dollars goes to Free France. And that's it for, yeah, that's it for America, the United States. And then Chiang Kai-shek's infantry that he bought is going here to Yunnan. Excuse me. All right, now. Money. The United States is now at 63. As you can see there. And let's see if they qualify for any bonuses. Possession of all U.S. home country plus 12. Yes, they do. So that's going to be 63 plus 12 will be 75 for them next turn. 
KMT is on two. Plus one for the Burma Road being opened will give them three again. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. But I do have, I believe, a couple of special operations upgrades to the United States. Let's see here. Yes, the, uh, well, let's back up over here. Yeah, there aren't any Marines out there. So, the United States is going to pick up The, let's see here. They're going to pick up the 1st and 2nd Marine Raider Battalions. They're also going to pick up the... First, they're going to pick up the first, second, third, and fourth Ranger battalions. Now, I'm playing a, a modified version of these placement rules. Um, I think I've explained this before. If it mentions, uh, mobilization in a specific territory of home country. I'm playing it as any home country land zone. And if it mentions a specific land zone outside home country, I'm playing it as any originally possessed land zone can be used. So, uh, the first and second, or first and third, whatever it was, no, 1st and 2nd Marine Raiders are the two Marines uh, at New York. And then 1st uh, and 2nd Rangers are the two infantry at New York. 3rd and 4th Rangers are infantry that are sitting on uh, the Hawaiian Islands and Midway. Ozark Outpost, over and out.